All right, Charlie, what day is it? Today is day 338. Nice. Um, what we do today? Today, well, we got our battery yesterday. So we hooked this guy up. So instead of a regular 12 volt lithium ion battery you have in a regular car, this is a lithium iron, not ion. Um, Phosphate. Life Po, as we call it. Uh, and so we hooked that up. So yeah, we talked this. about that in the previous video so that we could go through this switch, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is just acting, acting as a DC to DC converter and this is obviously the right. battery that will go in the car to charge the our power of the whole total side. And then we also hooked up... So we made all the wires for that, yeah. right? Uh, and then we hooked up this guy. This is not the gauge that's from our car. It's just another gauge that comes from a 924. Right, so that is this... Um, That is this gauge there, but we bought a used one because we weren't quite sure what the interface was and how to mess with it. And I didn't want to take the one in the car. First of all, I didn't want to feel like really taking it out uh, to do this, but I wanted to experiment and not risk burning one up. So we bought a used one on eBay that's kind of beat up. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh... We experimented trying to drive the fuel gauge with, uh, or the analog fuel gauge, because there's an output that you can set on the MCU to drive a analog fuel gauge, and that is out of out three right now. So we have that output going from here to the center wire on this center wire on this uh, gauge. Yeah, and so this uh, this gauge has this round connector here, and I was looking at these pins trying to figure out, well, what can I use to connect to that? And I couldn't. Uh, I was searching for all kind of things. Hand me that black wire by the uh, by the heat gun. And so what I wound up doing was I looked in my PC box with all. I don't know if you guys remember the old Molex connectors and the power for a. Um, let's see if it'll focus. Uh, come on, camera. There you go. But basically, you know, the four pin like yellow, black, black, red, uh, or connectors that you had in cd-roms and things like that i pulled some out and it turns out they fit they fit great on here um so so we just we put some of those on there and added some heat shrink to protect them and then i found this wiring diagram for uh the porsche 944 and 924 and it has the pin numbers on there so we have pin two basically going to ground and we have pin, looks like pin seven and 12 are connected internally. So I have that going to 12 volts. And then, so the positive lights up that side. So some of the lights come on when you give them 12 volts. Some of them come on when you give them ground like this one. And then the fuel is, you know, uh, it gets a resistance value from the fuel sender. And actually on Clark's Garage, if anybody else is dealing with the same parts, Clark's Garage has the resistance values that the fuel sender sits out at different levels. So we, I had a little decade resistor and we played with it. And sure enough, we got the fuel gauge to move. So on the MCU, we configured output three to be a PWM fuel gauge output to sort of simulate the fuel sender. And the Thunderstruck guys have a really cool setting system where you set the value for zero, you set the value for 25, 50, 75, and 100. And then it, it, it interpolates between those to, to set the PWM value. And um, what I thought was really cool is I was thinking, well, you know, right now it's measuring a real battery. It was estimating it like 80% or something. But that wasn't very helpful. I wanted to see, well, how do I set the zero? And when you set it, if you just go and set the zero value, it ticks to that value for about... 10 seconds and then goes back to normal operation. So it lets you see. So here, we'll show you that in a second. Um, but anyway, so that is in case that helps someone, these little Molex connectors fit really good and tight on there. Um, from like the ones from a, from a computer power supply or an older school computer power supply. And then we can figure the MCU, uh, found this wire diagram. What else did we do, bud? We turned cell balancing on. We did, and it started discharging yeah. cells that were overpowered, so that's nice. Hooked up a fuse for the battery. Yeah. That, but um, also, like, made legit power connectors to the 
we have one for like gauges and the light for the neutral burst. We hooked that up, made it look good. But if we turn this on, we should see it go to... What's weird about this Porsche thing is the 50 is not in the middle. And the 75 and the 25 are really close to the 100 and the 0. And um, why is that? Because the fuel tank is not like a box. Yeah, the so fuel tank's kind of shape. It's That's got right. a kind of weird shape. And instead of, you know, changing the fuel tank, they just change the markings on this. Yeah, and instead of change, like instead of having a circuit that adjusts for different values, they just they just draw the lines differently on the gauge, <laughs> which is kind of cool. And Charlie said, well, he wanted his battery gauge to match, so rather than fifty percent being right in the middle, he wanted it to fall on the fifty percent line. So yeah, and I um, wanted I wanted the zero to line up because for a fuel gauge, when you get full, a full tank of gas, it'll go like past, and when you're empty, yeah. it'll go to the left, but. When you're driving and you, you want to know when you're about to, you know, not have any more power to go, you don't want to be like, well, I don't know where the end of this thing is. <laughs> so you need the zero to be in the line. So I we went to every single, you know, changed the yeah. zero to 113, very specific values <laughs> to make sure that this little thing lined up. Um, and it does. <laughs> so 50 yeah. is slightly off, but. Well, I guess if you're building your own car, you get to do it the way you want. That's so right. uh, there you go. All right, we'll go ahead and turn it on. Let's see if we can see the fuel gauge. So it's at it's supposed to be at like 83 or something. So it should be in between the 75, which is the second to right, and then the 100, which is all the way to the right. Nice. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Um, so it finally jumped up there, and it, yes, it is between those two, kind of around the 80s. So right, it works. It it is working. And right now, so we read in the Thunderstruck MCU manual. Right now, because I don't have a current sensor hooked up. It's not doing Coulomb counting. It's just doing voltage estimation. So that 80% value is just based off of the voltage uh, that it's finding from all the cells. Um, so it's not super accurate, but we have it on our checklist to try to, to try to get a current sensor hooked up and see if we can get Coulomb counting working. Um, but so far, I've been very impressed with the Thunderstruck MCU. It's been working really well. has a ton of little features and capabilities in it, so... Uh, anything else we need to talk about today? I uh, don't think so, no. All right, well, good job, bud.